So yesterday, Adobe released some updates across Lightroom. One of the updates is the addition of noise removal using artificial intelligence, which works incredibly well. But there's also some masking updates, preset updates, and some improvements to the setup and workflow. Let's take a quick look. First off, noise reduction. So it's called Denoise and it uses artificial intelligence. You can find it in the Detail tab or by going to Photo and Enhance. Let's try it on this raw file of a portrait here that I've cropped and you can see was shot at 1000 ISO and you can definitely see the noise in the shadow areas. So I go to the Detail tab. Here we see Noise Reduction and we have Denoise and we have what we've always had the manual noise reduction. I'll click on Denoise. Now by default the amount is set to 50 and in the large preview window here it very quickly gives us a preview of the result. We can click down and release to get a before and after. Now that does look good but let's see it full size. In the bottom here Lightroom gives us an idea of how long it will take to process the noise reduction. We can also choose to stack the result or not. I'll untick this for now, then I click on Enhance. And when I do that, we can see the progress bar in the top left indicating how long it'll take to process. When it finishes processing, Lightroom creates a new DNG file and the file name includes the wording Enhanced-NR for noise reduction. Now let's look at the before and after. I'll choose the original and the enhanced version, then press C on my keyboard to go to compare side by side. I'll then press the tab key to hide the side panels to give us more room. So here's the original with the noise on the left and on the right with the Denoise AI noise removal. And you can see if I move over to the face, all of the detail is maintained. That is really good. Next we have masking. Now if I just quickly add a mask to this image, I can then show you that we now have the tone curve added into the masking section. This is going to give us a lot more editing control, so that is definitely a welcome addition. Plus, when we use masks, those are now included in the history states. Now carrying on with masking, there's also some additions in the AI masking categories. So with this portrait open here, I go to masking and straight away Lightroom starts to look at the picture to detect people. When it has, we have thumbnails of each person it has detected. Obviously in this example, there's only one. When I tap on the thumbnail of the person, we then have sections it has identified that we can then edit. Now we've had facial skin, body skin and what have you for a while now, but now we also have facial hair and clothes. If I tap on facial hair, you can see it does a great job with the mask, so I can then target that particular part with any edits that I want to. If I tap on clothes, you can see it includes all of the clothes, so I can then edit them as a whole. In this example here, you can see it also works great identifying those individual categories. And let's face it, it's only a matter of time now before the AI recognizes individual parts of clothing. So we'll be able to target jumper, trousers, shoes, and what have you very, very quickly. And that's really exciting. There's also updates to the adaptive presets. So we now have polished portrait, enhanced clothes, and darkened beard. And obviously when we use those, we can dive into the settings and tweak them, but we can also sync the adaptive presets to a number of images all at once, which could save a ton of time. And there's also a couple of workflow improvements. We now have this option that's been added. Open a smart object layers in Photoshop. So for example, if I select a number of images, then choose that option, they all open in Photoshop in the same document, one above the other in the layer stack, with each of them as a smart object. Also, in the preferences, we can now choose what we want our external editing software to be. 
Now, we were always able to assign a second choice, but the first option was always greyed out and you couldn't directly change it. But now we can assign both. Oh, and finally, the scrolling in Lightroom has been improved, so it's not as jumpy as it was before, especially when you had a lot of images. So some great improvements, I hope that was useful. As always, like, subscribe, comment if you want to, and I'll catch you in the next video.